I was walking out sure. right. <laughs> 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 it, man. I can say the wrong thing. What can I say? <laughs> well, welcome to, to the to the last panel for the evening. This is the okay. panel we call "What the Hell of Bella," mainly because of um of a very um what, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, what? Floplicious, disastrous, <laughs> disruptive, but in the wrong sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a look at what's going on in 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 the industry and um and our pretty much our take on it because the um, industry has been changing and they've the platforms have been trying to adapt um and the re the result from from amazon's launch pretty much left us shaking our heads wondering what the hell they were thinking so this is why we have what the hella bella hello <laughs> we, have, we have with us uh paula uh paula gill otherwise known as Paula PDS. She is um, an industry. She is an industry expert. She works in in film and books, and she's absolutely brilliant. Um, what else? What else do you work on? Um, I'm also writing. So and possibly some web comic stuff, maybe. So okay, you're you're totally underselling yourself, Idris. Idris <laughs> <laughs> <Hi. laughs> Gray. <laughs> Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about, about what you do besides um, your, your... I'm a book reviewer, writer, a sensitivity reader. Um, I'm t trying my hand at freelance journalism too. Um, I've done a little bit of screenwriting. So I've done a little bit of everything. And MB. Hi. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a published author, I'm a freelance, you know, copy editor, um, and I also happen to be a co-owner of an indie publishing company, so I got a little bit of hands on every side. Okay, somebody is listening to the panel live. I wonder who it could be, Paula. I'm not uh, going to do Okay. Yes, <laughs> am I supposed to do Okay, fine. Okay. I'm not going to point any more fingers. But, um, okay, so... Let's let's take a look at as what's happened this year. The um, uh, Bella Bella had um, a a a, prom, a promising um, thing when when I first saw what Amazon was doing with um, Bella, I got all excited that oh my God, someone had uh, has seen like maybe gotten the the notes from um, what what Pad was planning with the Infinite, and they were actually going to do something massive with it. Uh, I, I was like, uh, what, are, are, you, are you guys seeing this? But then they flubbed the launch. So. Massively. Massively. Yeah, and it's it's actually kind of sad that they did it. Um, they made a lot of mistakes. I think one was not understanding the online serialization market. It felt, it felt <laughs> quite honestly, in terms of the design and the way that the program was handled, that they kind of handed it off to the intern and said, okay, go figure this out and uh, occasionally listen to the, the writers who might participate and get everybody excited. Um, and then they didn't really give a lot of direction. They didn't do what we thought we, they were gonna do, which was create a separate app so that you could reach a different audience. Um, they didn't really communicate with us. There was like one representative, we called him KDP Sam because he was on the Kindle, <laughs> the Kindle wards and poor KDP Sam working out of who knows where <laughs> had to deal with all of these writers who were really, really excited about this mm -hmm. new opportunity. Um, and then it sort of launched and it, it, Amazon didn't even advertise it for quite a while. Yeah, it, it, it so, was almost it was almost like the um the, the product manager um took it a certain way and then it's like okay I'm done and just and peace out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean good, I, good luck guys. Yeah. I mean and, I can definitely sorry follow. Go no, ahead. Had, oh no no, no. I was, no, I was gonna say like being a Wattpad writer and you see this, you're like, okay, they're trying to, you know, jump on Wattpad's heels. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I personally just I had no interest in it only because I've dealt with Amazon on a different level and I've dealt with KDP and I'm like I can only imagine how this is going to turn out. And I really wanted to wish the best for it. Cause I had people, I, I knew friends, I had authors who were excited about it. They're like, great, this is a new platform. I can be the first one in, I can get, you know, the ball rolling and not have to like, you know, try to start from scratch on Wattpad, for example, you know, and then 
to just see it like not pan out how it should have or how they wanted it to like it's just it's, yeah. it's a little disheartening and i feel i i so sympathize much. for those authors who really had put so much time and effort into it succeeding mm -hmm. i think yeah. um, it's, it's mainly because people saw so much potential um mm -hmm. I, when Wattpad came out with the um with the infinite stories thing i i saw exactly where they were they were going and it that it, it could be so huge but um mm -hmm. but but then it, it went away and now this new version with the velo coming out it was like it, like i said it was like someone had seen Wattpad's playbook and and decided to run with it Mm -hmm. and right. it's, it's exciting to, to see as a, as a as a writer and as a serial writer who's been on Wattpad for a while. It was is exciting mm -hmm. to see such change happening in the industry. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super. Dis um, yeah, mind if I? Yeah. Oh, Don't hold back, Idris. Let's go. Has this massive infrastructure. They have this massive um uh marketing reach and if they had put all of the uh marketing potential and the money and and even just the technological innovation they have behind it it really could have could have been a disruptor in the way that wattpad is trying now to set it up self up to be you know properly but they really flubbed it because they honestly i think maybe it was a touch of arrogance they felt like because they're amazon mm -hmm. they win by default but they, again, as Paula said, didn't understand the market, didn't really try to understand the market, thought it was enough to slap Amazon on it, and then mm -hmm. we do the rest of the work. And in the end, we ended up just talking to each other. And so that ended up sort of undercutting what was the primary aspect of this, which was the monetary aspect. Honestly, I made more money from the launch bonus, and I'm talking this much money, from the launch <laughs> bonus than I did from anyone reading my actual contribution. Right. Same here, same here. Yeah, and I, oh, oh, no, I was just gonna say, I think it's really sad because there there was a huge hole in the market that they could fill, right? So you had Wattpad and Radish and, and the web comics and such that were maturing, right? They used to be the wild, wild west where anybody could come in and you could grow a huge audience. Nobody would know, you know, at HQ because it's you and your fans. Um, but now, it, they, like everything, like every platform, it matures. Um, it gets to be more competitive, a little more tight. Uh, the, they kind of become the gatekeepers of sorts. So I think a lot of people, and then for Kindle Unlimited, it was the pay to play. It's all pay to play, right? So here you have this opportunity for new writers to experiment, to get their name out there for the first time without having to pay for a cover without having to pay for advertising without having to do a lot of the even the social media if they had done it right you wouldn't need that much social media right away um and it's they just really lost an opportunity to get new writers and i think non-romance writers that was the other thing that i felt really really badly about because it's an older market right kindle unlimited tend to be older readers um and romance seems to kind of dominate every platform eventually which makes perfect sense. It's the largest market. They're voracious. Um, but I know that I know mystery writers and thrill and sci-fi writers who had a lot of hope for Vela, right? Because they knew of other writers who were successful in Kindle Unlimited. So they knew there was an audience there, but um, and an audience that doesn't exist really anywhere else except for maybe Royal Road. So I, I just don't know what they were thinking. Well, I, <laughs> I, know I, what they I, I know exactly what they were thinking because they um they went and they got the the authors to come on and the authors really didn't understand the whole serial aspect of it. Uh, us as Wattpad writers, we knew exactly what was needed, right. but we had right. the authors coming on with um, with these these huge books with ginormous chapters, and they came and just dumped it all on day one, and we we're standing there going like. Seriously, it never works. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. the thing is, Amazon has the um the what I call the money hose. They can take it. They can take the hose and spray, spray money all, all over the place and <laughs> fix all problems. But right mm -hmm. now, they they're actually having to do this back um not, not this back alley fix where they're doing um a, like a soft um approach to all the media. Where they do these all these softball interviews to people who are, who are um, very say Amazon friendly, 
So mm. these reporters are saying, oh, well, Bell is, is, it, is this great thing that's now coming out. It's never been done before. Hello. Right. Oh, right? God. <laughs> it's like, where have you been? been so many times. Now they're like playing catch up. And now I'm on Twitter and I see the advertisement all the time. And it's mm. just like, it's too little, too late. Like it doesn't even get much engagement on Twitter because people right. were hearing about it from us. And then now, and then nothing. So they kind yeah. of missed the boat on that. I think I think, people, I think people out there in the world are asking, what the hell? Oh, Vella. What the, the hell, hell Vella? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were they were definitely counting on readers to uh writers to bring their readers to it. They relied mm -hmm. way too heavy heavily on us to build that audience. Um and some and I think the readers who are really successful have that pre-existing audience. And um sorry, the writers who were successful had that pre-existing audience and could kind of, you know, entice their readers to try this new medium. Um, but there was nobody else to kind of market to or, or, or aim for outside of that. Um, and, but I do want to bring up one point. The thing with Amazon is they, they throw a lot of softballs and just that goes you know, splat against the wall, just total failures. Kindle Worlds, they had a screenwriting program, um, just King, Kindle Singles, which is short form. And they were all a flop eventually. They were all kind of ignored. But from what I understand, Kindle Kindle Unlimited, when it started, was a, just a dumpster fire. It was just, you know, just people putting stuff on that they didn't even proofread themselves. And had, you know, bizarre stories. Yeah, it was just like crazy. And it's like, no, I'm not going anywhere near that. And now look at it. So I, I, I wouldn't count them out entirely. Um, but they really need to get their act together because the competition is moving and it's moving very, very quickly. Yeah, well, if, I, if, they, if, if they actually understand what, uh, and they actually have someone on board who actually understands um, the serial, the serialization and how to reach out to the correct authors right. instead of their biggest authors, because the, the big authors uh, on KDP are is not going to work on, on, um, on, on Bella. Yeah, and I think it's it's very similar to what, what was said already. You know, it's Amazon. You know, they thought they could use their name and, right. you know, get in. Because obviously they're seeing that something's working with Wattpad. You know, you got Radish and Tapestry. Something is working. And Amazon's like, wait, we can do this. And because we're Amazon, we can do it better. That's the take I got when I, when I saw them starting into this. And so I'm just like, okay, Amazon, that's great. You got the money. Like you said, let's throw it out there. But do it right. You know, do your yeah. research, do a soft release, do a beta, do something mm -hmm. other than thinking that you can automatically get into serialization and match those platforms that have been doing it for years and be not yes. only successful, but better than. And I right. think that's where their big folly came. It, it just, it didn't work and it's not working. And then they need to really step back and realize what they need to do to fix it. Well, this, this actually places in, in a very um, interesting place, uh, especially with Wattpad coming out with new new initiatives that are still uh, kind of taking place over the next couple of months. Um, the, the announcement yesterday of uh, some of the programs um, that they're actually looking to pay um, writers is it's huge and it's uh, mm -hmm. potentially industry changing. Uh, right. I, 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 I was, I was, I have been asking for months, literally for months. What, how are you going to respond to this eight thousand pound gorilla in in the room with the money holes? I remember um, that. Yeah, we, we have the we have the um the Naver acquisition from mm -hmm. Webtoons um, Wattpad, it, and it right. it's bigger than people really realize mm -hmm. because um, now Wattpad has their own money holes. So what mm -hmm. does this mean for us? Actually gonna be so interesting um, because this is taking place in a time, and forgive the echo, I'm not sure what's going on with my headphones. Um, this is going on in a time where we're actually seeing a shift in these platforms in general, where mm -hmm. they're all trying to do something new to up their game or they're trying to conform. Um, and I'm sure this was covered in the serialization panel, but remember Radish and they changed their coin structure mm -hmm. and then Coppice is doing things where they're compensating creators and there's all sorts of things. And I was actually talking to MB about this and, and I say this delicately, this was actually, I'm so glad Wattpad talked about a little bit of what their intentions are 
But this was mm -hmm. actually a moment where they really could have gotten in front of the P in front of the public relations push because Radish is kind of doing some damage to itself with the way it's changed its coin structure. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Vela has really bungled their rollout. So I feel yeah. like they could have dominated the rest of the year if they had sort of even in more, even, even if they said, we've got four initiatives. I mean, I don't know what's <laughs> going on behind the scenes. I'm not Rodney. And so, <laughs> Rodney might. <laughs> oh, so, said, we're going to give you money, which is very sexy of them. And I love that. But right. a few more details <laughs> really would have helped us out because I feel like there's definitely a change in the energy in the industry from indie writers who are thinking of coming to Wattpad, but they need that push. They need just a little more um, reason to come here. And so I do mm -hmm. regret they didn't quite give us that sound bite where we can go, well, actually, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for, for you, Idris, that was kind of directed at Wattpad or at Amazon in terms of missing that opportunity? Well, it's more of a general statement, um, kind of in terms of the industry in the serialization platforms. So yes, right. Amazon really missed out because they could have jumped in front of this um, or at least gotten neck and neck with Radish in terms of mm -hmm. monetizing serialized stories. Um, right. And I know Wattpad is working on what they're working on, but I was thinking in terms of PR and marketing, uh, mm -hmm. Rodney and it had been talking to us a bit more about this is going to change the game, and I think it will. But it's um, excuse me. There's been sort of this build up of anticipation, and then we were like, "All right, it's going to change the game. Let's go!" And I believe it will. <laughs> but they didn't change the game, and so that was a little disappointing <laughs> because yeah, they're playing a whole other field. It's like, right? wait, where are you guys? <laughs> Like I'm playing solitaire, they're over at Six Flags. So I, don't know. I, I think they're more playing their own version of, of 3D chess, where where they they because Wattpad doesn't do anything um, in, in a hurry. They plan things out. They go by mm -hmm. the data. So um, if they have any programs going on right now, they're they're looking to get that data back before right. uh, moving forward with any any big changes. So um, a, a lot of the programs have just launched. Um, Danny has, has hinted at a lot of new things coming out with a huge epic troll of me yesterday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I believe her, her favorite hobby is um, trolling Rodney. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what, um, what's going to happen. I'm like, um, 2022 looks to be a very exciting time for, for all of us. And um, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be here. Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think from an industry standpoint, like, they need to step up. I mean, you have so many gatekeepers and you have so many, you know, roadblocks in traditional publishing that people are just stepping away from it. And they're mm -hmm. like, I can do what I want to do somewhere else who right. will treat me, you know, just as well, if not better, depending on, you know, where I go. I mean, mm -hmm. you come to Wattpad. And I mean, I can I can say personally, like, I've stepped away from querying and traditional publishing. I mean, I'm I I'm working on the publishing side, you know. So mm -hmm. it kind of opens my eyes a little bit because we want to embrace those writers who want to break the mold, who want to get away from the gatekeeping. You know, oh, being a small indie pub, it also gives us that that freedom to do that too. Like, you know, we don't mm -hmm. have to worry about selling to the big four now or or whatever you want to talk about it. You know, we can take on those authors who want to get into the traditional side of things, but also want to write the stories they want to write. Um, right. And I think, you know, traditional publishing needs to open their eyes and take that step back and realize that, you know, these serialization sites are coming into play and they're coming into play to, to play, to fight, you know, <laughs> with, you know, with Wattpad, you know, despite the fact that Bella did, you know, needs to reassess what they're doing. I mean, they they stepped up to that plate with with money in hand, and they're like, "Now yeah, we're gonna play this game too." I mean, then you got radish and tapas, and you know, now we got webtoon on our side. You know, it's like it's changing publishing as a whole, and a lot of the authors are seeing this, and they're mm -hmm. making their call. They're like, they're realizing that, hey, having an agent and getting to you know a big four, you know doesn't have to be the only way to succeed in this industry anymore. And, exactly. and things are changing. 
And, you know, we mentioned this in the new adult panel earlier is like traditional publishing is losing a lot of writers because they want to write what they want to write. And so they're coming to places like Wapat and Vela and Radish mm -hmm. so they can do that. And with the potential to get paid, you know, and potentially more than they could, you know, gamble getting, you know, on a bookshelf, you know, with traditional publishing. So, right. you know, it definitely is shifting the tide and, you know, the industry has to wake up and like you know, Innocent and I were talking earlier and, you know, it's a slow shift to turn, but they better start because they're going to just lose so much potential to these other alternative options, which I mean, I think it's best. It's awesome for, for us, for small indie publishers, for people who want to like, you know, do their own thing, whether you're self-publishing or serializing in other way you want to. And, you know, uh -huh. holding that to your heart, you know, keeping with who you are and being able to tell your own stories without the industry determining how you tell it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think it's a win. I think it's a win for us who are involved in it already. And I hope yeah. it's going to convince other writers who may or may not think Wattpad is legitimate or Vela or Radish, or you may not think serialization online is you know, real writing. I mean, come and mm -hmm. realize that people are choosing to go these routes now because they're so much more open to them to be who they are and what they want to write. Yeah. And, and they're and so... They Oops, sorry, Paula, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, <laughs> well, I was just thinking about what MB was saying. And also you, you're building a relationship with your audience, mm -hmm. a direct audience. I mean, you couldn't get farther from your readers than traditional publishing. I mean, it's it's amazing to me how just the, the chasm between the writer and their audience. And it's been closing with each you know subsequent platform. And now we have platforms where it's you and your readers and, and you build that relationship, which means you can go, you can take them wherever you need to, you can cultivate them how you do best. Um, it's just incredible. And it's actually kind of becoming currency in terms of IP and, and adaptation and sort of growing a, a, a work beyond just words on a page or words on a screen. Um, and so I think it's it's really empowering uh, a lot of writers, even if you don't have a large audience, even if you, you don't have a movie or TV deal, I don't know if writers, especially new writers, understand how much power and, and advantage they have right now. It doesn't feel like it a lot of times because you only have 10 enthusiastic readers, but you know those readers. You, you know, and the more you do it, the more that audience grows and you get to understand, oh, okay, this is my ideal reader. Okay, I know you, I, I've looked at your profile, we've chatted in DMs. I, I have data that's really, really critical that, that Wattpad uses, right? Sells to the studios. You've got access to some of that data. It's not mm -hmm. as clean and crisp and, and easy to, to kind of leverage, but you have data that a lot of traditional authors and publishing houses don't. And so I think that that's a really, that gets lost in the shuffle of trying to be this huge, you know, overnight success. Right. And that's one of the things that I think Wattpad is, is phenomenal for, is that you get that extra data. You know who your audience is. You know who your readers are. You can, you know, have conversations with them, which as a traditionally published author, you know, yeah, sure, you may get a review, but how often do you get to actually have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with feedback and comments and, and from your actual readers who are there, right. you know, enjoying your story, you know, as it goes. And that's the, the plus of serialization too, is that people keep coming back for more. Ideally, you know, you, you have yeah. this, so you build that audience as you go, where, where you have a traditionally published book, you know, it's bam, there, one shot and you can't take it back. I you know, know. and so I, scary. and I, right. And, and people will call you out for that in a minute too. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, and, and that's why I think, you know, the tides are shifting, you know, to keep going back to the boat reference, you know, it, it, it is shifting and the boat needs to start to turn um, to realize that in order to keep up with, you know, the current, you know, mm -hmm. you have to realize, you know, that readers and writers aren't the same they used to be anymore. No, not at all. Especially with it, with mobile and the age gap, it's mm -hmm. just, it's a completely different readership. 
um, on a lot of levels. And again, that's where Vela failed miserably. <laughs> um, and what Pat and Rad <laughs> got right, right. Andy, I, I always wanted to ask you, who is for the small press? What who is that reader? What are they like? How do they differ from traditional readers? Uh, so one of the things that we cherish with being a small press is mm -hmm. we can choose what we want. It's not like we're not playing to, okay, can we sell this at auction? Can we sell this? Anyway, you know, we take our authors on because we believe mm -hmm. in the story. It's the story that we can support. Um, so that's why we take on, you know, young adult, new adult, adult. And that's one of the things that I personally loved um, going with the small press when I published is because I was able to publish my new adult story. You know, I was mm. able to get it out there in a way that traditional publishing wouldn't let me otherwise. So right. I think that where you would query an agent and go that route, you know, you're looking to sell. You're looking to sell a story that can be represented and sold later. Where with a small press, you send us your story and we read it and we're like, we can, we can bring this to everybody else. So that's what I personally like about small indie presses, um, especially mm -hmm. ours, because, you know, we're not looking to sell it to someone else. We're looking to see, you know, what story you're trying to tell and how right. we can best, you know, share it with the world for you. Right. And this is Silk and Sword, right? Sword and Silk. Yep. Sword and Silk. And so mm -hmm. it's it, niche, right? You're, you're you to a particular mm -hmm. audience right now or? Yeah. So we honestly, we have represented contemporary fantasy. We have a his fic coming up. You know, we, we, we do, it's more, it is more, um, more mm -hmm. but you know, genre fiction, um, you know, we don't, you know, take on new adult. No, sorry. God, yes, we do take on new adult, <laughs> <laughs> like nonfiction, poetry, short stories, anthologies. You know, right. we, we do like to tell fiction. We like to share stories. Um, you know, we do like to represent the voices that want to be heard. So, you know, that's what we look for. You know, it has to be a story that needs to be shared um, that we feel that we can truly represent, you know, as a company as well. Okay, so this is bring this brings a big question. How are how are we gonna be part of this new revolution? Um, the, the changes happen in, in industry. Because um, it's not going to be static. It's not going to go back to the old way of, of being separated from your readers, like um, like how it is in, in traditional publishing. Like I, I believe um, Sword and Silk is taking steps, even just through social media, to have that connection with mm -hmm. readers. You guys are heavily involved in social media, and it's mm -hmm. a great thing to see. But the, the it seems like the, the bigger houses are looking at, at uh, social media and the regular uh, avenues of of talking as just a way to sell more books mm -hmm. and not right. making that connection. The, 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 the Wattpad strategy and the way that uh, the Tapas and Radish have been mm -hmm. doing it as well, they, they've, they're all emulating each other on, on different levels. It's, uh, it's about first engaging the reader and then um, giving them something to buy so that they, they, they actually like you. So, <laughs> How, where where do we fit in, and how how can we how can we help the growth? That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, well, honestly, Idris, I know Idris. What do you, what do you got? I know you got something something to say. <laughs> Come on, bring it on. <laughs> Come on. Um, I think those panels where we talked about branding are so important, and I, I hate the idea that we as an author have to be this big brand. But mm -hmm. so much of how the industry is evolving is around how authors are as personalities and how people are drawn to us and also our stories. So I think we can work together to make a safer space in this painful social media driven industry where mm -hmm. people can be themselves and they can tell their honest stories. And we may just have to sort of either by building our own platforms, um, a la Wattpad or, or, or with um, Sword and Silk and really, um, give them a run for their money so that we can take authors as they are and their stories as they are. And I think that's so important and tell them that it's not enough for you to continue to tell homogenous stories and to promote homogenous authors. 
it's not enough for there to be tokens for you to say, see, we have one black person and one native person and one non-binary person and the rest of you are invisible. So I, 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 I think that's really what we can do as individuals. And again, like in B, take as much as possible, start to participate in the industry. Um, and I always talk about this, but at PW, at Publishers Weekly, as I've worked there, I've had the benefit of really working on uh, reviewing really um, diverse, representative, inclusive work, interviewing people, um, headlining, uh, moderating panels of diverse authors, and really promoting them because that is so, so important. And you take for granted, I think, from the outside how important it is when a book that is just queer people or Muslim people or black people or what have you gets a star because that's free promo. You know what I'm saying? They can say, oh, this was starred at Publishers Weekly. And and this is not me just doing it um, uh, rubber stamping. These are good works, but these are good works that might not always get the attention they deserve if I wasn't there to be that person saying, hey, notice this book. And then they ask me, hey, at the end of the year, what books did you love? And I can name five inclusive books off the top of my head. And now they're on a list. Now that's a list people are going to use to go shopping at Christmas and for birthdays and for other events. And so I think, and we're all kind of those sort of people, we're able to use our individual positions to foster the industry we want to see. So we promote the people you want to see. We promote the stories you want to see. We push the ladder down behind us so that people can climb up behind us. And I think that is such an important thing to do in an industry that can be, frankly, especially when you're talking about marginalized people, it will chew them up and spit them out. And so you mm -hmm. have to be the person who is going to see someone get spit out and wipe them off and help them keep going or shield them with your influence if you have it. Um, so mm -hmm. that's what I think we can individually do from our respective positions to improve this industry that's still struggling to be as good as its promise. It says so much and it promises so much and then it doesn't necessarily keep those promises. Um, so we have to individually keep those promises for this industry. That's, that's really what I think. Yeah. yeah, and I think it goes back to, I think it was actually your panel earlier, Idris, you know, with the agents and about whether or not agents in this industry, you know, view WAPAD as a good thing or a bad thing. And, you know, it's, and I said personally, like, I've had manuscripts rejected because I was on WAPAD. Um, and I think, you know, there's this weird stigma you know, in the industry as a whole with these serialization platforms that we as authors on these platforms need to try to break, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's through our own stories and our social media and, you know, not feeling ashamed to promote these stories, you know, God forbid agents we query see them, you know, it, we shouldn't be ashamed of who we are, where we are, what we're doing, you know, right. and or like feel like we need to hide this part of ourselves or deny it just so that we can get further in this industry. Um, and I think, you know, with, you know, Vela and, and Wattpad becoming such a key player now in, in a lot of things with their own books mm -hmm. and, you know, webtoons and everything, you know, we're starting to break that mold. And I think mm -hmm. as writers on the platform, you know, and our social media and using that platform and what we have, you know, we can help change this industry. We can mm. make this what we want, you know, and, and not be ashamed of it or afraid of it or, you know, something like a deep, dark secret, like, oh, I used to write on Wattpad, you know, it's okay. It's a hundred percent okay. And, and right. I, I mean, be proud of it. You shared a story with, thousands and tens of thousands, a hundred thousand people, you know, that's more than any traditional published author can truly say, you know, because yep. as a trad, you don't know, but on Wattpad, we know how many reads our story has. We know where those reads are coming from. And that's something that we need to be proud of and, and, and share. And we can actually talk to our readers. Mm -hmm. The, um, I, I believe in the next six months, so it's um, it's we're going to be able to to say that we we are Wattpad writers, and it actually means something. The, that people are going to be 
trying to come to Wattpad because mm -hmm. it is it is living up to the, to the promise that it made um, several several years ago that is is going to change the industry and it it's it, it leaves me speechless sometimes just to uh, just right. even think about the potential that we have here and and my, all my fingers are crossed and all my toes are crossed that they don't um, and they will not <laughs> because they're they're focused and they do that they get all the data that they're not going to make us say what the hell a Wattpad. <laughs> and, and honestly, and like I said, Wattpad's been around for so long. And yes, there have been changes, you know, for better or for worse. I, you know, there's definitely, you know, a discourse about the changes that have been made on the platform recently. But then mm -hmm. there are the author, the writers who have stuck with it. You know, we may not be 100% happy with the changes that have been made, but, you know, we have an audience. We have a readership. And we're continually to tell our stories. And I say our stories because they are our stories. They're the stories we want to write, they're the stories we want to share that we wouldn't have the freedom to do anywhere else. And that's why, you know, I can say from, from honestly, I've stopped querying. I've stopped trying to get my stories out there in a traditional sense because Wattpad's where I started and Wattpad's where I gained my readership. And you know, I wouldn't be where I was, where I am as a writer, if not for Wattpad in the community, you know? And so, you know, yes, you know, there are things that make us turn our head and be like, okay, what's going on now? But at the same time, you know, you've got to appreciate what we do have, you know, that the traditional sense, you know, may not ever offer its authors otherwise. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I muted Paula. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, Paula. Tell me what I'm doing wrong, and I'll I'll fix it. Um, I would really love to see some of these platforms um, support niche authors better. Not just not just be you know, just, not just POC and uh, different genders and all the, all of that, but understanding smaller authors who have very very passionate fans and recognizing that and how powerful that is. Um, I love the idea and I forgot the name of the guy who, who put it forth, but the whole concept of a thousand true fans that you can actually be incredibly successful with just a thousand true fans. You don't need millions. And I understand why so many of the platforms are attracted to works that have millions of reads but there are other works that hit an audience or, or um, a readership, like Idris had mentioned, who've been ignored for so long. And they're so hungry for something new and different that speaks to them. And I think that a lot of what does worry me is that everyone, because this happened in Hollywood, everyone is so hyper-focused on the big platform, the big numbers. And they forget there was a period in Hollywood where it was all about the indie film. It was all about the new voice. It was all about sort of hitting that market that had been ignored for so long. Um, and then when that got kind of overshadowed by the whole superhero mentality. Um, and I don't wanna see these platforms go in that direction 100%. I would love to see some of them leave just reserve some of that energy and strategy for smaller authors who who can build a fabulous fantastic readership it's just smaller but you know so for some of them they could be more successful than those who have millions of reads and a hundred thousand followers on any platform and um and i know we're at the, sorry rodney can i say one last thing before you yeah and honestly, and this is the one area where I think, if I'm recalling the, the makeup correctly, in traditional publication, the, the big sellers pay for the mid-list. So what should be happening is all of these big stories that they're attracted to should also, those resources should be trickling down to support the ones who are smaller. So they should be being built up by the profit they're making from your afters, your she's with me's, your all of that so that they can take chances on works that may be more experimental or maybe more niche. So they shouldn't be ignoring the smaller or more niche workers, um, sorry, writers. They should be fostering them because like you said, right. 1,000 true fans. 
and 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 one thing I do just want to say is I'm seeing in authors a lot of a lot of them are doing multiple things. They're not just pursuing trad because the way that they're working now, it's just not it's not they can't do it. So they're doing indie on the side or they're doing serialization, too. And they're pursuing trad because with this new thing where they're breaking advances up into little bits and pieces, like five installments for like 10K, you can't you can't do anything with that, really. So people are really having to diversify in order to really make a living in writing. And I think the industry needs to be more cognizant that this is happening so that they don't lose lose out to serialization and indie and self put. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to get that. Yeah. Or create the, it's a, it's the creator economy. There are people who have built it on their own, right? <laughs> They've got their own Patreon mm -hmm. that's doing great. They've got their own apps that are delivering it. They've got their own they've got a direct line to their audience and they don't need anyone else. And I'm, I'm like more power to you because those are the people who are really kind of opening it up for the rest of us. But I don't know that the platforms really understand that. And I think they're missing an opportunity for sure. For sure. Well, there's lots of um, new innovations going on and I'm, I'm very hopeful that the platforms are going to change. But um, if, if you can look back on the past two days of, of, of just connecting with the, with the writers um, after this long absence and everything and, and hearing all of the, um, how the writers view, have the, the, their, their whole view of the world as well as the opportunities coming from, um, from Watt, Wattpad and Webtoons. What is, what is our position right now? What is gonna happen next? What, uh, what, what the hell? I mean, anything, is possible. I mean, as 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 writers, as readers, I mean, I feel like we kind of hold the power in this. I mean, this community, and I've said it numerous times to numerous people, like coming together this these last two days, seeing all the panels, seeing all the meet and greets, the expo booths, the readers, the people coming to watch it, you know, the community here, like it's the community that controls this. You know, if you have readers who are like, I don't want to buy this book. I want to read this serialization. I mean, the readers truly have the control in this. And I feel like us as authors and writers, you know, connecting with those readers is the most, like, important thing. Like, I can honestly say that coming to Wattpad and being able to engage with my readers directly it's like something I will never trade for the world. You know, I appreciate every single one of them, every comment, every vote, every read, everyone who reaches out and, and says, you know, this story is, is great or you should check this out. You know, I cherish it. You know, as a writer, it helps me grow. It helps my stories grow. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. And I think that's going to be the big thing when the industry realizes that the author reader connection is so much stronger than they give it credit for. Powerful words. Um, it, I've been drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, there's 13 year olds in the audience. Uh, grape okay. juice, grape juice. Grape juice, yes. Okay. Follow? <laughs> you wanna follow that? Uh, yeah, I, I think, MB put it really well. I, I think for me, I would just like more access to some of the data and the opportunity to, I've been really fortunate in that I have a very, very good idea of my ideal reader um, because my works fall in with certain fandoms. So, and, and I didn't realize that when I started because when my main work, it's kind of, you know, supernatural teens fighting demons but they go to a, a sort of magic school. So I'm thinking in my head, oh, Harry Potter and, and Teen Wolf, that's my audience. And I learned over the years, it's actually Percy Jackson and Mortal Instruments. And I, that was huge to me. I was like, oh, I don't understand. And I didn't know those works that well. And then when I read them, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Large, diverse cast of characters bonding over fighting demons. Okay, so it's a little different. And and having that insight has really, really helped me in terms of uh, understanding marketing, my stories, um, understanding my growth 
because that's a different audience. That's not the kind of audience that, you know, reads the steamy stuff and likes to share it on TikTok or whatever. You know, the, my audience tends to be quieter and more internal, a lot like me, very private. So I have to kind of address them and contact them and engage with them very differently from a lot of writers and and the advice that you get, you know, go on TikTok and, you know, go on every day and make my, writer, my readers don't care about that. They don't want to see me. <laughs> they want to talk about, you know, culture and politics and, and the way the story addresses racism and, you know, the characters themselves. So I would love to see some platform that gives you more of those tools and insight, because I think that we're all um, becoming much more sophisticated as authors. And I think that that could really empower us to, to do incredible things. Idris, want to close it up? Uh, I think we're going to see authors really taking their power back, realizing they have options and exercising those options. And I think the traditional, um, traditional publishing industry is going to realize their monopoly over storytelling is at an end. And they're going to either have to evolve or sit down and because authors aren't sitting down we have a lot of stories to tell i'm someone who's always prepared to tell a story on any platform that you offer to me and i'm not the only one so uh time to pull yourself up by your bootstraps publishing because uh you know we're coming step aside, step we aside. Are right here. okay well thank thank you guys um so much i'm, I'm gonna actually add um a couple of uh, special guest to the stream. Look, it's Deb. Oh, hey, it's Deb. Hi, it's hey, Fabulous. Hi. I've, 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 what, what we're doing right now is um, is saying saying goodbye. This is the end of the the convention. We we just uh, wrapped up our our last panel, and um, hopefully we've given a lot of people a lot of um, a lot of things to really think about because things are changing. Um, I'd like to really just thank everyone for coming to, to the conference and reaching out to each other and just reconnecting. And that, that that means so much to me personally, and I, I know to, to all of us. Yeah, and a big, big congratulations to the organizers. You guys did a fabulous job. I can't believe, I mean, Rodney, yes. We all bow to you. We but, love Rodney. <laughs> right. As we see on the screen, there are others and the mods. You guys mm -hmm. did you just knocked it out of the park. So yeah. yeah and I don't yeah. think I don't think the, the people who are attending like understand like the hard work that happened behind the scenes. Like yeah. when us panelists are panicking because our expos boots aren't ready or we're missing a link <laughs> or oh my god, I don't know how to get into my meet and greet. I mean <laughs> You guys were there and we love you for it. And we would not have been able to pull this all off without you. So we love you so much. Thank you so much. We couldn't have done this without your amazing work in this. Thank you for having us. We loved, I loved being here. I'm so Absolutely. proud to be a star. I'm so proud to be considered peers with all of you. And I just yeah. want to speak to the audience. You can be a writer. The only Absolutely. thing standing between where you guys are listening and where we are mm -hmm. is a few stories. So pick up your pen. In yes. time. Perfect I mean, time. You, you know, don't ever say you're an aspiring author or writer. If you write, if you write a story, you're a writer. You got this. I mean, <laughs> just take that step, share your words. People want to read what you've got. So just do it, man. Yeah, but you remember, yeah. you're always going to come across someone who says, you know what, I've always wanted to write, but they don't. And you are. So right. you, you're, you're do already doing it. You're in that top yeah. tier already. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember, remember, no there. one, no one else can write your story. Exactly. Good point. Yep. Good we point. got stories to tell, and people want to read them. So, get them out there because otherwise, who's going to know what what you can tell them? And and just just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Okay. With that, I, I want to give special thanks to Wattpad for sponsoring this event. They, they stepped forward and really made this happen in a way that it, it really couldn't have. So their support has been um, beneficial and it has allowed us to actually reach out to the entire Wattpad community. So thank you so much for, for coming out and- Thanks, um, man. And Love you all. Definitely. Thank you, Wattpad. Yay, thank you, guys. Thank you, Wattpad. Thank you. Thank you, Wattpad. Thank you, Wattpad.
I, I, I must give um, a, sh a shout out to, to Danny, especially because she's the one who, who got this thing rolling. Um, she did epically troll me, um, but uh, I'll talk to her about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, also the, the, the marketing team, um, we had Michelle, we had Xavier, and we had Holly Mulaski on the, the back on the back end, just uh, guiding things along and making sure that yeah. the patterns were taken care of. So it's been a huge, uh, huge undertaking, and we are proud of the work that we've done, and we're very glad you guys have been part of it. Awesome. So Thank you. That, yeah. Uh, if you want to say any any particular goodbyes, uh, now is a good time before I click press on, the, on this video. Can I go to bed <laughs> now, please? Can't you? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Hi, guys, everyone. Bye. You've been amazing. We love you. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Okay. Goodbye, and we'll see you on Wattpad. What is Writers Connect? It's a community of writers helping other writers. Most of us are Wattpad stars. And that's the connecting thread. Thanks for sponsoring us, Wattpad. But we are writers first. It's what we do. We write every single day. Well, some of us do. So we've decided to hold our own author convention. We have panels organized by writers with topics we want to talk about. Genre panels like romance, new adult, and vampires. Industry panels like serial fiction, the craft of writing, how to get an agent, and keep one. And we have author meet and greet sessions all online. We don't just talk about it, we live it. We're not a panel of experts selling books about how to do things. We're writers just like you, and we have experiences to share. So connect with us. Maybe learn a thing or two. We write together, we thrive together. Writers Connect, November 5th or 6th.